You're now listening to the Palmetto Dugout Show, hosted by State Director Sammy Esposito, Associate Scouts Drew Stewart and Sean Smith, that discuss all things related to amateur baseball in South Carolina. Here are your hosts. Welcome into episode 40 of the Palmetto Dugout Show. I'm Drew Stewart here with Sammy Esposito and Austin Smith. What's going on, guys? Coach, what's happening on this beautiful Monday afternoon? Fired up for a Monday afternoon. Breaking news, uh, not for you guys, but breaking news. Fired up. Let's go, Austin. It's a big Monday afternoon over here. Hope everybody had a good Mother's Day yesterday. Sorry we're a day behind. Happy Mother's Day, all the mothers out there. we're We're a day behind. Austin had about four parties to get to. Um, so that's why we're a little behind here for man of the people, a lot of people, man, man of the moms, <laughs> man of the moms, careful, <laughs> make, make sure you uh, like and subscribe down below. Um, we know a big week upcoming is the upper state and lower state championships will kick off, um, all the way from one a to five a, um, with four a catching up, um, just recently. Um, but we always, it's getting closer to the summer here. Events are coming up, um, starting off with Team Carolina Trials um, at the College of Charleston on June the 7th. Coach, the other one? June 20th, South Point High School. Combo, Monty. combo event. Combo, combo event. We're going to run another Team Carolina Trials along with a Rising Stars event that day. So, depending on uh, on – and obviously registrations on both sides, whether it be two separate ones or we'll kind of roll them all together. But looking for a beautiful day up there in uh, South Point High School. Great mm-hmm. field up there for Great. Coach Waring. Great field. Home of the uh, PBR South Carolina intern, Josh Jackson. Um, and then we, intern. we move on up to uh, UNC Charlotte on June 28th for the border battle. Uh, invites have went out and accept. I think it's filling up quick, right, Coach? It's filling up very quickly. So we're, um, you know, we're, we're close to closing out a couple of positions already. I know we're trying to hold as long as we can on that. We don't want to, don't want to close. If we have to uh, get another team, we'll get another team. But, but the, uh, the invites, people are, are accepting them. You know, players are requesting invites. So I'm, I'm checking daily on the back end with the request. So if you guys, you know, didn't get an invite or think you should have and, Request one will make that decision, you know, based off uh, obviously roster needs is the biggest one, you know, with the South Carolina team versus North Carolina. So we're looking forward to that. That that last summer was an incredible event to be able to, you know, for us to watch our guys against North Carolina, especially helping get that that uh, roster built for for the futures games and kind of compare those things. So we're looking to uh, take another W from uh, Tar Heels up there in North Carolina um, like normal that South Carolina whips up on them. So we'll, we'll look to get another one up there. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Tar Hole State, um, as Sam <laughs> calls it, um, which, which takes us on. Um, very, we got various yeah. days throughout the summer as well, um, as well as the junior futures and future games at the end of July. Um, and that'll lead us all the way into our top prospect games um, in August. So, hey, state Still, state still working. Uh, hold tight on that. Still working. You know, there's a lot of counties, a lot of districts, that are moving to this new uh, school calendar. So, so I know there's two guys uh, on this show um, that are being affected by that, um, along with a lot of uh, a lot of p- baseball players out there. So, we're having to reroute our schedule, um, and probably going to have to move that thing to a weekend. If I'm if I'm having to look like that, just due to the middle of the week, uh, it takes a hit while you guys are in school. Uh, so, we'll uh, stay tuned for for events and news on the top prospects but we're we're still working on things to get that that event built and out there yeah i can't take any days off for that um i don't get as many as this uh this other guy in the chat um he gets a little a few more days than i do um since he's higher up in the food chain isn't that right well i think what i think what sammy's trying to get at is he might need a, a I mean, he might need to hire another employee here to join the staff maybe one that doesn't work for the public school system so if any anybody out there if you're unemployed if you are employed you want to make you know if you don't work in the public school and you, you like to volunteer your time and not get paid go sammy look, looking for a fourth guy omar where you at <laughs> come on now omar come on omar uh, you can you can pitch you a tent up there at top prospect games and hang out with Sammy. You um, might need a first base coach at the junior future game too. 
So, big, <laughs> I, you know, I will be. I, I have a feeling I'm going to be riding solo for that for a little bit with uh, this great new calendar, uh, year-round schoolish type thing you know, that you guys are partaking. It's all about hey, the kids. kids. You know what I mean? Hey, with with some staff changes uh, near me, you never know. Stewie Media might be present that day. Um, watch out! Watch out now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, playoff updates. We talked about um, upper state, lower state championships um, about to kick off here. And I think some of our playoff picks have already bit the dust. Um, you, it's it's not good. I mean, I think my picks at the beginning of the season were better than my picks three weeks ago, um, which is a little sad. Um, I trust your gut sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's, you know, the, the data is great. The analytics are great. But sometimes your gut, the gut has it all. So maybe we should have stuck with our preseason picks. Maybe not. You never know. Hey, we should have stuck with Southside Christian as that preseason pick. <laughs> we we did. We threw them under the bus as soon as they got some yeah. injuries. I mean, we we moved on quick from them. And look at them. We're fair weather fans. Fair weather. <laughs> That's what we are. Yeah, <laughs> you play well in front of us. We are moving you up. You know, it's kind of like some of the pundits out there in college baseball. One team instantly wins one weekend and they're back in the mix, you know. So we're we're I, I like how you call that. We are fair weather fans. Yep. Hey. No shame in our game. It's okay. Um, games of the week, which we really don't, we can't uh, or tell what's going to happen here. Um, but you you look at the four A and you got two big games with Lawrence taking on Catawba Ridge, um, which we'll get to Catawba Ridge here shortly, um, and then North Myrtle Beach taking on South Florence. Now, hey, two guys in this chat. Um, I'm not sure who Austin picked. I think he picked James Allen. Um, I took the Chiefs and, and Coach Espo over here took the – what are they, the Bruins? Um, the Bruins. So, watch out. Someone made a correct pick right there. We don't know who yet. Um, who knows? But we can't we can't make any games of the week because by the time this comes out here, um, all the Monday night games are going to be underway. Um so there were six innings the other day. My James Allen pick looked good, and then it looked really good in the seventh yeah. inning. It was really bad. Yeah, if they would have only played six, <laughs> we were good. We were good on six. We're looking uh -huh. for a new high school ruling. Yeah, play that in protest. Speed up rule. We'll we'll hop in here to some some uh, players that were seen recently. Um, I'll kind of start us off when we went to one game, um, but hey. It was a it was a fantastic game uh, with T.L. Hannon and Dutch Fork. Um, biggest takeaway from that game was 2025 shortstop Will Craddock um, from T.L. Hannon, who we've seen at the Diamond Invitational as well. But it, in this game, um, solid contact all night, um, was able to uh, absolutely hammer a ball um, at a right center field. Um, but he's a typical T.L. Hannon shortstop. They've always churned out one of the really good shortstops throughout the years um, that go to Power Five programs. Um, physical presence in the box and looks to do damage early in that count. Um, defensively smooth, tall, lean frame that's going to fill out more. Um, so he's going to be exciting one to watch for T.L. Hanna and kind of fit into that shortstop role they've had over the years. I think that that that's going to be mine. So I'm going to hop to Austin because he's got 45 guys. So I'm, so I'm, right. I'm finishing back with my one. So we're going to yeah, go that way. Pick, we'll go one, Austin, 20, 50, one. one. I got you. Okay, well you went you went fifty seconds, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to really kick it because I thought I got a minute, but you went fifty. I have my stopwatch. I I have four players, and they told me I had to really kick it in gear. So I'm about to start. So you can start my timer now. First, I got Mason Tompkins Blue Ridge with a district championship at Seneca Monday night. Mason was on the mound against uh, Jacob McGovern. They had a, a really good pitchers duel. Uh, AJ Camarota hit a hit a home run off of McGovern. Had a big big home run for him. Uh, looked like nobody was going to score through for most of that game. Then he hits tank. They end up winning two one. But Tompkins went complete game seven innings at like eighty four pitches. Uh, Georgia Southern is that right? That's what y'all told me. Georgia Southern. Yep, Georgia Southern. Uh, he was up to eighty nine uh, and just kind of moving it every direction you can move it, hitting spots. Uh, just impressive night for him. Um, even though Seneca ended up winning that thing. Uh, Tyler Vassy for Seneca came in freshman 2026, right-hander. He was up to 85. Hadn't seen him before. Um, he just kind of came in basically 
won the game for Seneca that night. They were, you know, obviously running low on pitchers that deep into the thing, having to go to that second game. But uh, big, tall kid, freshman, right-hander. Uh, like I said, he's up to 85. Good-looking arm. I'm running out of time here. i got to really kick it. Catawba Ridge, Friday night, I was at the first game. Uh, we dodged the rain, Catawba Ridge and Greenville. Jake McCoy at uh, Catawba Ridge, he was up to 94, hit 94 <clears throat> a couple times. Had to come out in seventh, and I think he ran out of pitches or at least got up against it. Uh, 2023 lefty McCoy going to Wofford. A uh, lot, of, lot of people there watching it. I'm not sure if we're going to make it to Wofford, but had a lot of people there watching. Um, and then Walker Coleman for Greenville. Uh, I think everybody was expecting uh, – well, either way, regardless of who you were expecting to see pitch, Walker Walker pitched uh, an absolutely fantastic game for Greenville. I've seen him – I think I've seen him four times this year, and uh, he's a 2024 right-hander over there at Greenville, and he just – he was he was up to 87 too, which is the highest I've seen him up to this year. I saw him at Floor Field. I've seen him in the preseason tournament, so I've seen him all throughout the year. He was uh, he was he was very good Friday night. I know it didn't work out for Greenville and those guys, but he he pitched a very good game. So McCoy just happened to outduel him that night. So sorry, that was two minutes. I'm a whole minute behind. My bad. Yeah, pretty pretty impressive to 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 roll through some really good pretty good players like that. I'm I could have kept little, going. Uh, I could have kept going, but I don't. I I know how y'all are with your time. Speed up rules, pitch clock, <laughs> the whole deal. The clock was ticking. You had to step clock. off. Got to got to get a fake man. fake throw. I do want to throw man. a little plug. You know, neat thing for you know seeing some of these guys over the years. Like we've got a chance, Jake McCoy. I remember when we first got when I first got here, came back first event was a top prospects deal running with North Carolina, and Jake was 84 to 87. Outfielder, swing it, can run. Then we got a chance to see him again the next fall. Then we saw him last – or two winters ago, I guess now, and he's at the preseason All-State and it's up to 91. And all of a sudden the phones are ringing off the hook. Everybody's come calling, and now all of a sudden you keep watching him. So it's it's neat to watch some of these guys over the years progress to – you know, not to say they're all going to go from 84 to 87 up to 94. So, But it is fun to – to watch some of those guys make that move. So it's uh it was it was a neat deal with that one. Top of the heat sheet too. Top top of the heat sheet. Hey, check the, it out. Check it updated. Top of the heat uh-huh. sheet. Move Not only are we top one. of the heat sheet, he he also if those of you that have the subscription and read the scout blog after the game Friday night, because that scout blog was in Friday night. Friday night. Um, he not not only was he ninety three not he hit ninety four probably two or three times but he was ninety three in the sixth might have hit ninety three in the seventh too there were some people there placing placing odds on pitches with the radar gun mm-hmm. we had a we had an over under ninety two and a half and he he got the over so he hit ninety three those of you who aren't familiar with uh, gambling lingo he that's hit the verif- over. that's verified with the stalker yes multiple. Multiple, Multiple. stars. Plus were, to go along with a with a pretty dang good slide ball on top he, of that. He threw some sliders that the catcher, I think the catcher obviously knew they were coming because he called them. But he, <laughs> I mean, we they were he he threw a couple that I would I'm glad I wasn't umpiring behind the plate because he he almost got hooked up a time or two because that that thing was it was like cause, you know, everybody's all gat, you know, you're getting ready, you're gearing up for 94, and then all of a sudden it just uh, boomerangs in there got like a got like a left hand turn from from where I'm sitting. I mean I'm oof, that's a good good luck. I mean you kind of I know I hit this way when I was a hitter and I wasn't very good, but you just got to pick one and hope to God he don't throw the other one. <laughs> or he throws a cement mixer on that slide ball and hit your hit your bat. Yeah. And the 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 big the big problem with that is that, you know you can say there you sit there and say I'm gonna sit on the fastball it's still 94 is not easy to hit if you even if he tells you it's coming. Truth. So with that slider uh, too, he could have said, "Hey boys, here here it comes," and yeah, good luck. So in order to see for for our listeners out there to chase down Jake McCoy again, they're gonna have to roll into the they'll have to win. It'd be what game three for him or the first game of the championship series, right? From a pitch count for you, uh, well, they play again on Thursday, or they play Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. He could throw so, Thursday. He could and, throw and Thursday. Yeah, PBR might days, be so. in attendance Thursday because that's at Lawrence. Wait a there minute now. If if Uh-oh. game three, 
he would be up or he would be up for game one of the championship series if they make it. He could but throw game more, two or three of uh, per state championship. Yeah, so well, but I can have ourselves not, putting them. We, let's not have a pity party for Catawba Ridge because they don't have their top two guys on Thursday and Saturday because they're probably going to throw Galber on Monday or Tuesday, and he's ninety. Just a just a freshman. good luck with that. So just a freshman good? up to ninety. Is that good? He closed, he closed Friday night, and it, I, I'll be honest with you, it, it wasn't bad. It was it not wasn't bad. bad. <laughs> He only had to throw like six pitches, but he was up. He was up to ninety. So you know you're fourteen, fifteen, however old you are when you're in ninth grade. Fifteen. I don't know. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. You throw ninety wow. when you're fifteen. That's that's a good project. Uh, it, you're on a good path. You're on a good path. Well, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my guy. I know we can sit here and talk about uh, Catawba Ridge all day and you know they, they're they gonna have a tough one coming up but i'm move on i was over at uh we got more to touch on brooklyn casey here later on in the in the show but i'm gonna go ahead i was at a big big battle heated battle brooklyn casey versus Dreer uh last week and i'm gonna talk I, you know kind of i'm gonna start with the 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 pitchers um i'm just gonna talk uh, on one but i do want to give a shout out to nolan cook at Dreer for throwing a, a heck of a game before running out of uh Running out of a little steam and, and kind of getting hit a little bit in the fifth, but he was lights out for four innings, keeping a tough Brooklyn Casey offense at bay. But I'm gonna go with Hayden Thomas for my guy, left-hander, um, college, recent college of Charleston commit. Um, you know, was a you know he's about 14, 15 months off Tommy John, and you know was kind of a you know a big name at a younger age, and obviously got hurt and kind of bounced back. But Hayden is a, a uber athletic kid. We've seen him a couple of times over over the year. We've seen him hit quite a bit. Um, between myself and Coach Smith there when he saw him at the Optera um, Solutions Tournament earlier on. But we've uh, we've got a chance to watch him throw. And, you know, last week it was 86 to 88 with a good breaking ball and a changeup. I'll tell you the one thing he did better than anything else was command a fastball in on right-handed hitters. And he gave those guys fits all night long. Winds up going seven innings. I think he had nine punch outs. One walk, gave up one run um, kind of early on. Uh, Dreer was able to get to him. But but he, he's, you know, he's a young man kind of coming off of, you know, still coming off of Tommy John. I know everybody's always like, ah, you can be back in a year just as good. But, you know, usually it's that 18 to 24 months. So I think he's still hitting his stride. It's going to be fun to watch him go down there to Char Charleston for Coach Holbrook and kind of keep watching him blossom. But athletically, heck, you never know. He was also in that home run derby up there at Opterra. So he's obviously got some juice in the bat, and he, you know, two weeks ago, he not only threw a complete game shutout, but he hit the – or not a shutout, but gave up one run, but also hit a walk-off homer in that game. So Hayden's a fun one to watch, and uh, he was he was lights out again last week. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can keep winning and, and roll into the 3A or what happens or if his next outing will be in the Cougar uniform. Hey, well, they host the Buford Eagles today. Um, Giddy up now. Giddy up. Giddy up. Winner's got to go to Hanahan, um, so that's a, that'll be a big one. Um, Hanahan or ha ha ha? My inside inside joke there for the listeners. Oh, ha, ha, ha. No, we're just going to tell them. I mean, Mr. Somebody Stewie, saw Media, Stewie Media was at a wedding, and instead of putting in Hanahan, he put ha 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 ha. <laughs> Autocorrect gets you every time. <laughs> Autocorrect got you. PBR was working everywhere that night. Um, <laughs> in, PBR was striking in, out. In more ways than one was PBR working. Um, <laughs> Ride them bulls. Ride them bulls, baby. Ride. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on um, here to the bomb squad of the week. Um, and that goes to 2024 outfielder Jackson Proctor um, from Berkeley High School going to the Clemson Tigers. He go right here. Um, but we gets a big home run to win the district championship um, against Chapin. And check out the celebration here uh, at the end. Y'all can't see it, but our viewers will get to see it. It's a hell of a celebration here with Stags and Proctor. Um, but if you, <coughs> you two guys need to go see it real quick, you can head to the Twitter page, and then you type Twitter in page. our hashtag PBRSC Bomb Squad, and you'll find it. There it is. Um, so, yeah, now we get to the part where everyone's been waiting for a year to hear this part. Um, it, it, I think all of us have something to add into this one this time. Um, and that is the concession stand segment. 
Um, I think I'll start us off with the first thing. I think I was the first one to have anything to add to this show. So I went to see T.L. Hannon Dutch Fork, um, and I texted the boys up here. Um, so I went to go get a cheeseburger. Well, we were out of cheese. So <laughs> she, she looks she looks at me and she says, how about nacho cheese? I'm like, well, let's try it. It was fan that nacho cheese on a hamburger. It was the best thing in a long time. And she said it was a little spicy too. I didn't feel the spice, um, but it did get a diet Coke with it. So it helped wash it down. Um, but fantastic nacho cheese hamburger. Can't go wrong with the diet cold on top of anything. <clears throat> you can. You want me to go that way we don't hold you up? I know you got a lot to you got a lot to go. I, I can go ahead and go, or do you want to mix it in the middle? That's yeah. something you know. I'm I'm a good I got I can't wait. I gotta go. I get I gotta, it. you know get it out. Obviously, get it out. <laughs> obviously, as we're just talking about, I was at, at Brooklyn Casey and and you know, first of all, playoff games, as we all know, are is a packed houses across the board and was able to uh hang out behind home plate and get a little bit of work done, get some good velos, get some get some pitching stuff done. Um, but between the cowbells of each side. Um, drove me down the line and down the left field line at Brooklyn Casey's, a thing that they like to call the luxury lounge. Um, now, take a couple of wrong turns there, and uh, Casey West Columbia might go to something else you think is a luxury lounge. But this is a luxury lounge here at, at, at Brooklyn High School. And uh, I, I, first of all, I got to thank Lee Thomas and his crew, Dave Medeiros and his crew down there. I mean, I'll roll up the grills there. Before I go home plate, Dave goes, hey, you want to take one of these to go? It's a little, little jalapeno popper. Oh, wow, Dave, man, this thing's phenomenal. I ate it real quick. I go, I'm coming back. So second, third inning, whenever it is, I go down. I come walking up. As soon as I walk up, one of the gentlemen goes down there. He's like, you just coming down here because of the food. And I go, well, ah, part of it, but the cowbell is the other part. So I get down there, and I happen to look. Snapped a photo. I had to send it to the, uh, the two cronies here to make them a little upset. We had fillets. We had lobster tail. We had baked potatoes. We had um, fried dumplings. Got to get your greens with some asparagus, um, along with some bigger jalapeno poppers on the grill. And at first, I'm sitting there looking at it, and they're like, hey, coach, you want some? I go, no, nah, man. I, guys, I'm good. Y'all, I'm here working. Y'all, y'all are eating. Y'all have at it. Next thing I notice, they half a plate with me and give me half their food. I'm, I'm telling I don't know if there's a, I've had a better steak. I don't know if I've had a better steak and I've had a lot of good ones. So there's a bold statement here, but I don't know if I've had a better steak in my life than sitting out there at Brooklyn Casey high school, eating half of a filet. I could eat 13 of those filets that night, half of a filet on top of a lobster. Who eats lobster tail at baseball games in high school? Brooklyn Casey parents do. That's what they do. On top of that, to wash it down with some boiled peanuts. And luckily, I had me a Coke Zero in the bag to, to wash it down with as well. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, the, the hospitality for PBR South Carolina that night was second to none. Um, that They obviously didn't have to do any of that. I, I've seen some pictures over the year of some of their – their meals they've had, and and I've been uh, extremely jealous, and have, have been kind of waiting for the right time. And I kind of thought it was the right time against Dreer High School that night when it was a little heated in the stands. This is the time to kind of step away and, and kind of get a meal. And I I can't I can't thank those guys enough. It was you know I know it's not a concession food, even though probably people in the stands thought it's concession. But the mixture of the fillet with the lobster, oh, and the fried dumpling. With some asparagus and a baked ba potato, lights out. Lights out. 10 out of 10. Thank you to the dads of Brooklyn Casey Baseball, Lee Thomas, Dave Medeiros, and some other guys I'm leaving out. Phenomenal stuff. And uh, I was a little upset. I heard Saturday they were going to do some Brunswick stew. I didn't make it out. Couldn't make it out of that day. But that day last week was phenomenal. So, I, I'm sorry. Austin, it, you're up. It, it made you feel like you were in the Casey Cafe, didn't it? I, you know, I've never, I've never eaten in the Cajun Cafe. I've watched a lot of tears flowing from the Cajun Cafe. In my times, I've never eaten out there. I've seen some balls fly over the Cajun Cafe. You had um, a good view of the Cajun Cafe from coaching third base. And first base had good ones there. It's just, a, um, just a but I'm just line. telling you the, the fillet, top of the line. 
Well, so we we don't all get to. It's, I, I'm not even going to try to like one up that because some, some of us don't get to go out to these ball games and run for mayor and stuff and go down and talk to the people. But some of us go over there and try to get something. You know, I, I you're over here eating fillet and I'm knee deep in some bushes at Seneca High School trying. I, I don't even know what I came home with that night. I'm I'm freaking I'm knee deep in a bush behind home plate at Seneca high school, eating a pack of crackers and a Dr. Pepper, and just, you know, getting ready for a second half of a game and you're over here eating lobster tail and steak. But on the, on the flip side of that, we're not going to talk about my time up there anymore. I've already been there enough, but uh, I, I really don't know how Drew manages to go to Seneca seven times a year because I, I, next time I go, I'm wearing a full body suit. I came home itching from head to toe. Just not sure what I brought back with me. But Friday night, I am going to say Greenville High School. I've been to Greenville High School uh, like three times already. First time I went, I got the bowl peanuts. They were great. This time I go over there, a guy beside me, he had packed house again Friday night against Catawba Ridge. And he had, you know, I thought about just saving up going to the Crazy Mason afterwards again, you know, because that's, that's my thing. Um but I was so low, so I said, you know what? Nah, I'm just going to eat and go home. He had two slices of pizza over there. I said, I'm going to go over there and get some pizza. Why not? Nobody's scoring here. We got guys throwing like 9,000 miles an hour. Nobody's nobody's getting a hit here. So let's just go get something to eat. I get over there, and the lady tells it. Very nice ladies back there behind that counter as well. Lady sells me on, on a hot dog, homemade chili. It was great. Uh, those of you that follow along on the Twitter page, she responded. Um, I think it was the same person that sold me the hot dog. Um, 10 out of 10 on the hot dog. I know yours was 10 out of 10 eating, you know, Golden Corral down there at Brooklyn Casey, but I didn't get Golden Corral. I might've got like Skins hot dogs or something. I'm not sure, but it was very good. Very good hot dog. Um, yeah, that's all I got. It was, I mean, it was, it was a good hot dog. Were there grill marks on the hot dog for Omar? I don't know. They had it covered homemade chili. Homemade was it, chili covered. Was it kosher? I don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't have food allergies. I just eat stronger, stronger than green onions. <laughs> if I'd have had some green onions on there, that would <laughs> that would have really shout out to Omar. Hey, how about this? I'm, I'm gonna put a plug in on this one. This doesn't relate to high school concession stand. Oh, uh, but what's a Red Sox Braves game? Oh. If you ever go to the Braves games, make sure you get this. I got a deep fried hot dog that was fried in it was with mashed potatoes, deep fried and mashed potatoes wrapped around it, deep fried. It was a foot long, it, and it had some horseradish sauce sprinkled on top of it. Fantastic. <laughs> Thirty-four ninety-nine, just gone just like that. Well, you know, you only live once, so I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you get a souvenir cup to go with it. Um, <laughs> make you feel better about it. Helmet full of Devon dots or something. We were <laughs> we were stronger in green onions after I ate it, though. You know, it, it's I know not. You know, our our concession report get a little hairy every once in a while, but it's more so. It's not as much the the whole concession, right? The experience. I, I do thank some of our our awesome fans out there because we've all had people come up to us during games and make comments about the show. So hopefully we uh, provide a little insight on some baseball, but a little bit of humor for, for some people as they're watching this. And uh, you know what? I think we'll all be at a game this week, so we'll see what uh, what kind of concession report we'll have coming out after this week. I don't know if uh, – I don't know how much we can top what we've had so far. But, hey, you never know. Never know. You, you've been to Green Bull before. You haven't seen the homemade chili. That was the first, uh, and she that's really what sold it on me. I was like, mm, hot dog, mm, maybe, maybe not. She said, There's homemade chili, and I got at that point it was sold. Sad thing is, this this segment's going to come to an end here soon, and we're going to have to replace it with something. And I'm thinking, uh, where is Omar or who is Omar? I think that's going to be the next segment. We're going to like this, we're playing guess who. Um, we run that in a second. Maybe we need to have him out to an event this summer. Yeah. He'd come work one of those tournaments with me and Eddie. Him head on down to the shipyard, get you a tournament. 
Yep, we might get a, a good good matchup with some teams on a on a Friday morning. Eight, nothing like a Friday morning eight o'clock game on the water. Have those guys ready to go. Get you a little no. brisket and grit bowl up there to stand and a cup of coffee. Yeah, I might even let you come. He might even let you come up and run the scoreboard if you ask him just right. A little brisket quesadilla in the afternoon. A little brisket. <laughs> a little, anything else you can put brisket on for supper that night and you'll go home full of brisket and not want to eat for a week, but that's what we go down there for. <clears throat> and not even know who you watched. And it, it, nope, ain't got a clue whose scout team elite prime I watched, but they're gonna they're gonna kill it. Speaking of uh, tournaments and events, we're gonna work on run, our our team Carolina trial down there in Charleston is the night before first tournament starts. Oh, so man. we're gonna work on um, you know getting a little. So so we got any viewers out there that are gonna be playing down there, or some parents that are go. I want to go see what this old PBR South Carolina thing is all about. You can give a little discount to you guys that are playing the tournament to come on down there. And then the second part of that discount is you get to hang out with Austin for the weekend. I'll be there all weekend. Mm, God, that's that that's mm, that's fun. Probably get a nice hotel over there, probably about 15 minutes away, free continental breakfast. Free coffee. Might get that nice one we got <laughs> last year, had the kitchen attached to it. <clears throat> Yeah, make your own food. Yeah, so, so somebody who not to be named, they're not on the podcast, so we can talk about them if we need to. Sean made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and put them in the fridge for the week, but that's like a I'm better be, move. It's like I'm gonna protein. be riding solo to that this year, unless hey, hey, hey never know. There, you unless, know, there's an you know, I'm yeah, not, I'm not. Yeah, we got some things in the works. Yeah, but no, and we're trying to get that fourth <clears throat> that fourth employee that doesn't get paid. It's kind of like that. Co- it's, this organization runs kind of like college baseball. You three paid and one volunteer. Yeah, so we need that volunteer. Even though they're trying to give us a fourth fourth paid this upcoming year, I don't know if we're PBR well, South Carolina's not there yet. We're, we're a little not, behind. We're, <clears throat> we're not NCAA compliant. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we're more like a division. Two kind of program right now. I was thinking. More By the like way, got regional starting up. Division two regional starting up for you guys. Hey, the Wolves <clears throat> and the Crusaders hosting. Ooh, how about that? Big time, right there. Matters? We got the fighting uh, Banks Faulkners over there. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Um, but North Green were trying to defend that championship. Watch out now. Um, yeah, starting up. Starting up hey, for for people that are trying to figure out the graph the uh, the bracket of D two baseball. If you looked at it, don't ask me. Maybe ask yeah, good luck. But it's um good luck. I think you might need a uh, like a rocket science degree or something to try to figure that one out. But if you as long as your name's in it, I guess that all that all that matters. I think it's the four. It's the regional. I don't. I couldn't figure it out. Yep. As long as they haven't put a put a line through your name, you got a chance. <laughs> That's right. Or if your, name's not in there at all. if your name's not in there at all, you don't have a chance either. Yeah, you're you're, you're out you're out you're, recruiting already. Your line was <clears> through your name a while back. Um, Better yeah, luck next so year. That uh, look, getting ready to watch those guys crank up here soon and, and see if some more uh, South Carolina boys can can bring home a championship again this year in D two baseball. That's right. So hey, we'll we'll move on with that one. Um, a lot of <laughs> we got uh, brackets are out um, for high school baseball throughout the state. Story went out um, this morning, um, so make sure you check that out um, and, and catch up with that bracket. As we have games going on tonight, we have some elimination games. Um, good luck to all the teams still participating in the playoffs as upper state and lower state championships are about to get underway starting Wednesday or Tuesday for four A, uh, Wednesday for all other classifications. Um, so I think that's it, guys. Anybody else got anything? No? no? Okay. So um, from all of us here at PBR South Carolina, have a great week.